Yes. Ooh, okay. <laughs> All right. So I'll be talking about how to start a profitable solar business, what you need to know, and what you can do. In the Institute, we get a lot of people calling and making this inquiry. And I'm sure that you all know that opportunities have risen drastically for the solar energy sector. And then it becomes important for people to be groomed so that they can take the opportunities, either as employees of solar companies or as entrepreneurs. So today I'm just going to be talking briefly about this and at the end we're going to take questions. So I just want to go through an overview of what you will learn today. First of all, we'll talk about the solar basics, the solar potential. Why is the whole world talking about solar? Then we speak about the problem. I'll share some statistics with you. Then we look at solar business, a multi-trillion dollar business for Africa and why this is so. We look at different types of market segments. Then we take examples of successful startups in Africa, successful startups in Nigeria. 10 major applications of solar from which you can birth several business ideas. Then we look at the value chains. Then I share with you the pros and cons. Then we look at the big opportunity. Then I urge you to start your solar business and what you should do, next steps you should take, sources of capital for your solar business. So uh, briefly, I, I would like to, from time to time, I would ask, you know, if everyone is still hearing me. So let's go. I want to introduce myself briefly. Chris has already done part of that. My name is Gloria Gray, and I'm a certified solar PV design professional. I was a former consultant of, of uh, Nigeria's national, sorry, I was the Nigeria's national coordinator for Instant Solar Energy USA. Currently, I'm, I'm the founder, I have an NGO, that was how I started with this whole advocacy thing. My NGO, Glow Initiative for Economic Empowerment, have another arm for environmental sustainability, which is called Climate Smart Nigeria. I'm also an author of four books. I write a lot around solar and around climate change. We set up the Renewable Energy Tech Training Institute to groom and prepare the next generation of efficient installers and entrepreneurs including women who will serve as competent workforce for the industry and also provide uh, solutions as entrepreneurs. In the course of my work, I have also met with high profile personalities like Barack Obama, US Senator Chris Coons, Ms. Ivanka Trump, Governor Jack Markle of De Delaware and Ethiopian President Ms. Sally Walk -Zoid. Um, Some of my awards include the Nigerian Star Award from the US Mission in Nigeria, Nigerian Energy Champion Prize from the Nigerian Energy Awards, President Obama's Mandela Washington Fellowship Award, the Young Energy Professional of the Year in 2018, the foremost woman in renewable energy recipient, leader and mentor by the U.S. Consular General, and Far State Governor's Award, most exceptional of the 25 women in 2014. Then I got the NYC Award of Recognition. The reason that I'm sharing all this, we always do this when we do our trainings because we want you to know that you have come to a safe place. You have come to a place where the people are qualified to lead you through into what you're supposed to do. Then in April 2019, I was selected as one of 15 African female business leaders to attend US government launch of the OPIC2X Africa, where I met with Ivanka Trump and Ethiopian president. So, Red Sea is Renewable Energy Tech Training Institute. Just a quick introduction so you can you know, see what we do. One of our, we have two goals, to prepare a skilled workforce, including women that will be employed by renewable energy companies, to equip entrepreneurs like you, including women who will drive the solar energy markets. So our goal is just to do simply this, and to do it well, we have launched what we call the growth support plan, and after support for all trainees at no extra cost, where we share opportunities with you, just like this webinar, which is free. Um, and then you get other opportunities like installation, just to make sure that you're grounded in what you have just learned. These are some of the feedbacks that we get from our entrepreneurs. Victor was our student in July last year, and he already started his solar business, as you can see in the first picture. And he says, my first job after the training done and dusted, thanks to rating. This is because of what we do for the alumni after our training. And then you can read the recommendations written by people, both people that we don't know. 
Recently, we had a treat by one of our students who had now launched his full solar business and is really making money at Ibadan. The tweet that you can see, but I just screenshot it today. You know, so these are some of the reviews. Eventually, you can go and read all the reviews here uh, of students, people talk. We have 50 reviews of people talking about their experiences with Reti. This is to show you that we're really passionate about what we do and we want to help and work with people like you. This is myself pictured with some of my students. You can see by the left and by the right. So let us start. Mm, is everyone still following, please? Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, now, I wanted to start with the basics, right? You know, some people say, oh, but we know what sun is, but we know what solar is. But I found out as a lecturer at Reti that the basics really matter. Some people know the basic or they think that they do. But by the time you teach them, they realize that, wow, okay, we didn't know it was like this. So first things, what is solar energy? When you walk around on a sunny day, the heat that you feel, the rays that heat your skin, the hotness of your skin, that is solar energy at work. Now, that feeling that you feel in your skin can be harnessed to solve problems such as heating problems, electricity problems, and cooling issues. So every day we get the sun all the time. And how come we have not started utilizing the sun fully? The potential of solar energy. Did you know that the Earth received 174 petawatts of solar radiation? In fact, I don't even know how to put that into perspective for you, but it is so much that the total solar energy absorbed by the Earth atmosphere um, oceans and land masses is approximately 3 million, 850,000 exajoules. I'm sure you've not heard that before. I, I'm, I was also hearing for the first time. And now this particular energy, if received in one hour, the whole world can use this in one year. Wow. I did not know that the sun was this powerful prior to the time I started my activities with solar. So let's think about this for a moment. I want you all to close your eyes wherever you are and think about the world without the sun. What do you think it would be like? So many people don't know how the sun connects us all. So many people don't know the cycle of how the sun works in the earth. What do you think will happen if you know, we do not have sun? Now, if there's no sun, first of all, the cold that there will be, you will not be able to imagine it. It will be too cold. Water would not exist. All we're going to have in the world is ice. And you can imagine what other pe people in other parts of the world, like uh, Eskimos and places in Canada, they would just all freeze to death. But the sun helps us to regulate how the environment works, right? Plants cannot work if there's no sun. You know, sun has actually changed the world. So it works in everything, including how we grow our food, how we eat our food, the entire cycle, plants eating, sorry, animals eat plants, Human beings eating animals, and that entire cycle helps us to survive as human beings. But why is everyone talking about solar? What is this thing going on with solar? It is because of the environmental situation. I don't know how many of you know about climate change. Climate change. Now, um, I usually say this during our class. We teach a free course on climate change at our school. And I always say this to my students, that before the environment can work, there are some things that have been put in place by nature, some people say by God, to help us live and function properly and optimally as human beings that are living in the world, right? The earth is living and it's breathing. So if care is not taken, and if some of these things that have been placed by nature gets altered, there's going to be a serious problem because our whole life depends on the environment, on how the environment is, if it's good or is bad, it's dependent on it. So, but climate change is happening because of human beings' activities, which is harming the planet. We continue to use fossil fuels for our activities. Sometimes I don't blame us though, but then now the earth is crying. Human beings born fossil fuels, and these have put the environment in a dangerous condition. You know, if you have recently been hearing solar, 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 this is the reason, because of our environment. So now climate change is happening. Sometimes people say, wow, it's too hot. Sometimes people say, wow, Lagos is too flooded. What is going on here? Hurricane Katarina, we all heard about the 
bush fire, the white fires in um, what's it called, Australia. And all of that, see, it's not by accident. How do you think nature will just purposely burn itself, right? Why would nature just purposely set itself on fire? Something is going on, that is why. So this is the topic that is driving the world right now, climate change. If it continues and if we do not put a stop to it, humans, plants, and animals will all be destroyed. But what is fossil fuels? You know, I've get you know, we've had that question so many times. What is fossil fuels? And why is this so dangerous for our environment? One, fossil fuels are types of fuels that were formed by the dead plants and animals. Now, during the Industrial Revolution, one of them, there were there are four industrial revolutions. Some people discovered oil. You know, that time it was such a big thing, oil from under the ground, and people started to mine oil. But it is dead plants and animals and sea, dead, dead sea, dead fishes and dead sea animals, you know, that has been submerged into the earth for hundreds of millions of years. You see, you will not be able to imagine this because you cannot even imagine one million years. You might be able to imagine 10 years, 50 years, 100 years because of your grandmother who is up to 100 years or because you are 30 years. So you can imagine 30 years. But you cannot imagine one million, of, one million years, talk less of 100 million. But that is how long that these dead plants and animals have been submerged into the ground. Right? So when human beings die, they go to the ground. When animals die, they go to the ground. When trees die, they go to the ground. All of these things are submerged and are pressured under the earth. Before they die, they contain energy. Before they die, they contain energy. Now, let me tell you the secret. These, could, these fossil fuels have no business coming back to the atmosphere. This is something that nature has naturally uh, buried. Nature has naturally buried it. So people were not supposed to go and mine it and bring it out from the ground. You can see the picture on the slide, the smoke coming out. It's popularly known as CO2 gas which is produced by the combustion of fossil fuel or crude oil, right? Now, you're, you're, you don't have any business breathing this thing in. So let me just tell you that so that in case you're on the road some other time, you will have that in mind. You have no business breathing this thing in CO2 gas because it doesn't, it's not supposed to be in the atmosphere. So this is what happened. This is what human beings did, right? Um, but fossil fuels are a leading cause of global warming. These are the three types, oil, sometimes known as petroleum. Oil is formed from And then the next one is coal. You know, so these are the three main types from which all other forms of fossil fuels are discovered. And we continue to burn, to burn them, to use them for transport and electricity, right? And so now, the reason why this is a problem is that it has started to cause climate change because our earth is getting warmer and warmer. Why is this happening? When we burn the fossil fuels, we continue to add these gases, especially CO2, into the atmosphere. But before this time, before we, we, before we came to the earth, before we started living in, in, the, in the environment, there are already four major types of greenhouse gases existent in the atmosphere. CO2 is one of them, water vapor is one of them, nitrogen is one of them, and methane is one of them. And these gases are supposed to be in the atmosphere in a balance. They are naturally there. So when you walk around, you actually breathe it in because it's normal and it's healthy. But we are not supposed to add more to it. So our globe is warming, also known as global warming, because we have added more of these gases. So now the earth is crying. I want you to imagine a person who's lying down on the bed and you cover them with one blanket. Then you cover them with another one and you cover them with 20 pieces of blanket. What do you think will happen to the person inside? People will start to heat up. So that is what is happening to the earth now. Some of the impacts are flooding, extreme sun, dryness, desertification, death of animals, and the shrinking of riverbeds. But what is the problem? The reason why we have come here today, what is this problem we're trying to solve? 
Our continent, number one, has arguably the worst electric power infrastructure in the world. Yeah? So Africa is the continent of the world without access to electricity. Additionally, we Africans, we greatly suffer the adverse effects of climate change. Why is this so? Because we don't have the structures and we do not have the infrastructure to adapt and mitigate to it. For instance, there was wildfire in Australia. If not for the infrastructure they have in place, there would have been much more casualties. I wonder what would have happened in some places in Africa who have not you know, set up these kind of structures to curtail things like this. Now, there is 40% solar capacity in Africa. Only 1% is utilized. So if you're hearing so many things about solar, if you're hearing so many things about solar, please know that what you're hearing is just 1%. Right? Africa will be the largest continent in the world by 2040. Wow. At 2 billion people. I don't even know what that is going to look like. 2 billion people in Africa. But what is going to happen for energy for all these people? Right? By 2040, 1.2 billion people in Africa will need energy for cooling, for food, for vaccines. So these are all the opportunities there are. Energy for cooling, energy for heating and energy for cooking, like the clean cook um, initiatives. Now, energy efficiency will be paramount. You see the way oil is popular now, is the way these things will be very popular, will be the things that are popular then, mm. right? Uh, okay, I, there are 600 million people who do not have access to electricity in Africa. That is a lot of number. And the 900 million people do not have access to clean cooking, another opportunity. This is the second largest cause of morbidity, meaning that a lot of women are dying. A lot of women are dying. Because of the access to every day, right? So, also, all the 48 countries of sub-Saharan Africa, which have 70 million people, so imagine what that looks like. Now, the reason why solar energy business will be a huge market is because my solar energy business is a fastest way to the land. I'm sure people are saying, investment and yet there's no light but suddenly Africans can actually take charge of their electricity that's what's happening now we've gotten a lot of feedback whereby you know a lot of people so most of our students give, give us a lot of testimonials around how around how the customers are very happy because now suddenly they are no longer dependent on NEPA. You know, so people are really looking out now for something they can do for affordable types of solar systems that they can install. Why would this make a multi-dollar market? Because people are ready to stick their electrification into their own hands. People are no longer willing to depend on dollars. This is all of the businesses. towns that are far that are not close to the natural national grid. So these remote areas, these places, but they all have sun. They do not have grid, but they have sun. But they have sun. Solar energy is clearly the fastest way to get all of Africa connected to electric power because Africa is located close to the equator, which means loads and loads of sun. Yeah? Which means loads and loads of sun, right? So the demand for cleaner and greener alternative is gaining momentum. There's a lot of funding available now for people who want to develop solar projects. People ask me, Glory, what are you still doing in Nigeria? You know, most of my friends don't expect me to still be in Nigeria. They say I have lots of opportunities abroad. But this is where the, the, the thing is. This is where the problem is. If you go away from the problem, how are you going to solve any problem? And how will you make money? So I hope that this is not your own mindset about leaving Nigeria. There is something to do in Nigeria. 
all the people from China, Germany, and all of them, I can't remember the countries that I meet, that I meet, I meet them every time at conferences, all once in, into Africa. Mm -hmm. They're looking for distributors, they're looking for people to work with so that they can start selling in Africa. So that's when my friends say, leave Africa, I say, no, but here is where the problem is. I want you to have that mindset today. Third, the cost of buying and installing solar mm -hmm. is failing. Be before, the problems that we had, what, what I hear all the time when I speak conferences is solar is too expensive, solar is too expensive, what will I do? But the truth is that it is the one time, it is, it is the first time that you invest in it that is expensive. Afterwards, you begin to enjoy your free electricity. And the good news is that all of this is changing. Honestly, in just the last six months, the change that I've seen in solar has amazed me. Prices are going down fast because a lot of new products are coming out fast. A lot of people are innovating. A lot of young people, most of them that we train at our schools, to begin to do today. So now, there are even further development. There are better payment options. Some people let you pay in one year. So these types of pay-as-you-go strategy helps even people in the poor villages to be able to afford solar. Now, let me talk about the market segment, solar energy market segment. What is the meaning of segment? A market segment is you know, a group of studied areas of a value chain where activities have been observed by the customers. So these things you see on my screen are different areas technology by solar model i'll go to the next page soon where people are making inquiries and people the larger uh, global globally people are wanting to find out information about that is the market areas where people are purchasing so that this information is very helpful for a young entrepreneur and for a marketer to learn how to target the market a market segment by technology you have photovoltaic systems which, you know, there's a technology for it and you can use to dry things. There's parabolic trowel, there's solar power tower, there's Fresnel reflectors, and there's dish turning. I want you guys to later research on these things because these are some So by solar model, a solar model is like it is on the screen, right? Um, a solar model, you know, has a lot of types, monocrystalline, polycrystalline, cadmium telluride, and amorphous silicon cells. So these are different types of market. There are people who are producing these things. They are looking for markets. There are people who, there are different types of businesses who do these different types of things. Yeah. The next one is solar market segment by application. There's the residential, there's commercial, there's industrial. Residential means homes, commercial means businesses. Industrial can mean industries um, lighting heating and for charging so you guys go ahead eventually and look these things up and see what you find so now i want to share examples of companies who have excelled in the industry in Africa. Because a lot of people, and most of them are young, that's what I like about it, because this is the time for young people. They are the ones who keyed in into the solar revolution and they are really making good money. First one is Empower. They're based in Tanzania, and just a group of people coming together to say, we want to solve this problem. And notice their business model. I want you all, to, from my examples I'll share, observe the business model, the thing that they were doing. So these guys, for $6 per unit, sell a home solar kit, sorry, a home solar kit, which includes panels, LED lights, a meter, and a USB for charging phones. Now, this is one of the things we teach at Reti. You know, it's important to learn what you must, how you must be involved in this solar business, which value chain that you want to focus on. Because these guys, Empower, found out a problem. So they created a product that will solve that problem. And they are already they're making a lot of money. Next is M Copper. Some of you may know them. Uh, we also work with them for staffing, uh, train staff. So now, um, M Copper already have 300,000 customers. 
their own is a little bit more expensive. Their power system costs two hundred dollars. But the interesting thing is that they can let you pay in two years. So you see why their business model will fly because they give you the time to pay, right? So they have attracted over forty million dollars. They need to partner with the government, right? Now, um, is everyone still hearing me? <laughs> I'd like to to know if people are still hearing me with a show of hands or by saying hi in the chat box, please. Hello. Good morning. Okay. Um, if everyone. Okay. Thank you. So that's what this company did, Power Hive. And uh, what they do is that they sell their smart meter hardware to third parties, right? So it's important to observe how these people started the problem to get identified and the business model they're using to make money. Next is Helvetic Solar. This one is very interesting because the guy, the founder is a very young guy. And when he started the company, he was just 28 years old, right? Design and install for electricity for homes. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. They install and maintain solar system across East Africa. So now this business has made more than five million in revenue. So that was the part that hits me. So people have been asking me, Oh, can I make money in solar? Is solar is there money in solar? The answer is yes. So you identify what you want to do in the sector what do you want to do in this sector it's a very wide sector what kind of business would you want to engage in right so these people that i'm sharing the examples found out what that niche is that they want to engage in in 2013 this business okay i said that before so that is the example from africa the last example of africa i'm sharing only five is this guy's rate which means african renewable energy distributor Right, so what do these guys do? So I'm sure you've seen it sometime, you know, some people pushing the solar cards and then they put a panel on the top. You can come by and charge your phone and maybe they're using the card to sell soft drinks and things like this, right? These were the guys who first started the idea before it, you know, before it became this way. So these guys found a problem. And so now the, the target market is markets, parks, and streets. This is the areas where they go to, to, you know, you know, mount their stand, their solar cure stand, right? The most impressive feature of this business model is its micro franchise model. So what this means is that these guys have a franchise model, which creates opportunity for ordinary people. So they can have you know, sign a franchise with them and get one of their kiosk and you start using, set up your small business, or you might even have a barbing saloon inside this because you know the kiosk can power little things like this and these people earn a living so that is what is called economic development and things like this interest me so much because they are sustainable anything that's providing job for people is sustainable so, in these people these are companies that have dealt directly with directly i've dealt directly with these guys these are like the top five in Nigeria who have made a mark in the solar energy industry and most of them started not too long ago within the decade within 10 years right so we have Oxana Solar we have our energy we have a Steven Solar who is also one of our partners and we have Olu Solar and Ashton Solar Company also our partner so now um any okay I want to say any questions so far but I think that we're meant to take questions in the end but you can start preparing your questions any thoughts or ideas that you have around solar about the market around the market please ask me in the end now there are I want to share two major applications of solar energy which can birth several other businesses ten major applications one solar water heating this is a big problem of the world, especially in the West, where they have winter. 
these guys spend so much money in heating so that solar water heating is a big opportunity for them so this is an area, an area of technology where people can invest in learn more about it and see how to start something in that area and you have solar heating of builders which is very similar to the first one these days there's a lot around sustainable building it's called green green builders whereby architects people building engineers now have to build sustainably you know the days are gone when you have to do things anyhow because of our environmental situation even builders have been told now have specifics of how they can build these days so now when builders are building they they they, they have a plan for designing the building in such a way that it can attract the heat of the sun naturally without using a physical equipment which so you have that distillation, there's a lot of people, a company I worked with, a USA company in Nigeria here, used this product to distill dirty water. So this product can make it and then drink it. You worked in some places in Lagos Island. So this is another area where a lot of things can be done. You have solar pumping. There's already solar pumping machine for pumping water. That's another technology. And... Hmm. That's another technology. And we have solar. Can everyone still hear me? I can see that my internet is not stable. I was told that my internet is not stable. I guess I can go on. Right. So you have solar drying of agricultural and animal products. A lot of people have the issue of decay of their products. In March uh, 2020, next month, our company is having a partnership with a USA company to come and try to do a lot around. To, to build a solar, we are, we're calling it a solar dehydrator. Because a lot of people, a lot of women, a lot of farmers cannot preserve their products no more. So we want to explore the opportunities that can be found in solar drying. So this is another one. Solar furnaces for another for places in the West that have issues with cold. You have solar cooking, there's now solar cookers. Now these are areas of technology that are emerging. The good news about this is that these places are still emerging. They are still very new in Africa. They are popular, they're getting popular in the West, but they are, that, that is why those people, Chinese and all of these people, Germans, Chinese, US, they all want to come to Africa because that's where the market is, right? So now we have solar electric power generation, which is what I'm sure many of you are interested in for generating electricity in the homes which works uh, in, uh, in four ways, not really four ways. You have uh, to build, to generate electricity for a home through solar, four things must work together. Solar panels, charge controller, inverter, and batteries. So that is what this one is talking about. Then you have solar thermal power production. And we have solar greenhouse gases for agriculture. Yeah. Now, value chains of renewable energy. Before you can start a project from top to bottom, these are the areas you must go through. And within this value chain, that is why it's called value, there are things to do. There are careers that can be developed. There are businesses that can be started within these value chains. So um, the life cycle of a project from idea to execution includes this following. One, research and development. Before a company, a, proje a project, a government, what kind of project you want to do for the community what is the problem the community is experiencing before and what they can they do now we have engineering aspects of it sorry we have the project development after they've decided what they'll do then they need to develop the project uh, but figure out the structure and modality of the project and how it will work then they must involve the engineers and the entrepreneurs they, they can manufacture the component that they can use for a project and they can also acquire. Next, before you can even do all this, you need one adequate training, you need funding and you need technology before you can go through. So these are the three key elements in that value chain. They also represent opportunities to create value, like I said. So, for instance, in the funding, in the first part of it, they might decide to involve a PhD student who is undergoing research. And so the PhD person will make money. The PhD student might decide to become a consultant to just research clean technology projects and advise governments. So that's one way to set up a business in that particular value chain.
of renewable energy, but we like to share it so that you just know. Some of the advantages are that the sun never finishes, it never goes away, and it reduces your electricity bills. Uh -huh. If you install solar today, you know, the, you say bye bye to NEPA, they never come to your house to knock again. And that is what most Nigerians are doing now. In fact, they're doing it very happily. And that is the reason why solar uh, is getting very popular in our uh, world, sorry, in Africa. It has low maintenance costs. A typical panel lasts for 25 years. So you don't even, you don't have to be paid all the time, just like you do your generator, right? And then technology development. There's a lot of technologies in this sector. In fact, I saw one as of today. There's a lot of things going on for different types of sectors. A lot of things is going on for camping, for tourism, a lot of things around solar energy. Going for that. Uh, wow, that's disturbing us. Can you all put off your mics, please? Can you put off your mic? Oh, mute your mics, please. Yeah. So solar energy creates jobs. In fact, I am so proud of the renewable of the alumni of Renewable Energy Training Institute. Together, all of them have employed more than 50 people. Many of them, we, we have out of 114 alumni, the institute is, is, is really not up to a year. We started, we used, we, we did a testing in 2018. But employed 50 people. So solar energy business can help create more jobs, can help offer more jobs to people. And that way you're adding to the economic development of your country. With solar energy, you can conserve more energy because then you'll be very much aware of how much energy you use because it is, it is, it is your money counting now, it is the solar on your roof. It is environmentally friendly because solar energy solar panels installed on your roof do not produce the dangerous fossil, sorry, the dangerous CO2, the dangerous greenhouse gas called CO2, which is causing climate change. So they are accepted environmentally. Now they have ro low running costs. You don't have to maintain them. For maintenance, you just have to spend a little money maybe to clean the panels every month, every once in three months or every month. So these are some of the things you can sell to your customers by the time you start your business. It is noiseless, it's way better than generator. Some of the disadvantages are costs. Cost of solar panels, which like I said earlier, have started to reduce. The cost of solar panels, people, have started to reduce. So if you're thinking solar is too expensive, I cannot go into this business, you better come back, right? Because now there's a lot of, like I said earlier, value chains, not only solar panels, there are a lot of other things that you can do. And the cost of these things are reducing because many much more are being produced every day. Another disadvantage is weather dependence. We don't really have a lot of this problem in Africa though, let me just tell you, because we have sun almost throughout the year. Other countries can worry about weather like Germany, other countries that have winter can worry about weather. So number three, the storage is expensive. Yes, I, I can agree. Some of you also know that batteries are expensive. So energy storage is expensive. But like I said, it's like when this when when telecommunications came, you know, was became popular in in my country, Nigeria, because I know that there are people here who are not Nigerians. That time, SIM card was so expensive. It was very, very expensive. But now SIM card is given for free in Nigeria. You don't have to buy any SIM card. But that time it was so expensive. But that is what is happening with solar. That is what is happening with the energy storage systems. It is going to get better with time. It uses a lot of space. So now you may not understand this one because some people you can just put panel on your roof. But when government wants to do a big project, they usually need a big space of land to put the panel. So this usually becomes a problem. Where are we going to put the panels? Five is associated with pollution. So people argue that solar energy the cost of creating the products, the cost of making the batteries and making the controllers and making the panels causes pollution. So now what is a big opportunity? The beautiful thing about solar is that it is still new in Africa. I don't know how many people know this. It is still relatively new, not so new, but it's just 1% of the sun that, is, that has been tapped. 
out of the 40% solar capacity, we have just used only 1%. So can you imagine that there are still 39% of opportunities that young solar entrepreneurs like you can plug into to reach out to other places? The problem is that we all keep concentrated in one place. It's important to begin to reach out to other places around you who do not have access to electricity and design a solution for them and produce it for them. So, in fact, there's still a lot of things that has not been done in the industry. So the nature of this gives you an early advantage to establish yourselves. Okay, now... Hello, Glory. Hello. Hello, Glory. Okay, I think there's a network break there. Um, um, so let's hold on. Let's hold on a bit. Uh, let's hold on a bit. Um, I hope she's not off. Okay. So far, it's been an interesting um, subject matter, I must confess. Um, seeing the Hello? credentials. You don't need to talk. Hold on. We are here. You don't need to talk. Hold on. Um, I guess she'll be back. Maybe our network. Uh, okay, she'll be back now. Hold on. Let's hold on. She'll be back now. Uh, let's hold on. The Nigerian factor still affects us even in our webinars, but we're going to conquer those things. Maybe one of these is somebody who create another kind of um, uh, system for internet services that will be better and easier. Okay. Okay, so I just spoke to her now. She'll be back. Let's hold on. Let's hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Need you. Need you. It's not easy. No, no, <laughs> so what is it? Okay, so let's let's start um, cooking our questions so far. Let's start cooking our questions so far. So what is it? Which song am I singing? <laughs> Somebody said my voice is not sweet. No problem. All of you yabbing me. No problem. No problem. Your punishment is coming. <laughs> Should I play a song for you guys as we wait? Hey. Uh, which, song, which song do you want to hear?
Mm. As you share Bitcoin, Solar Song. <laughs> uh, ah, ah. That is it now. This one say. Uh, okay, so I was at, I was saying the things you must do first before starting your business. You must determine the kind of business that you want to do. Then you would look for your startup capital. Then you register your business. Many people think you know, in Nigeria, where I'm from, some people like to, they call it hustle and they just want to quickly do stuff and just quickly try to do something without the proper registration. It's important that you register at least a small business name, right? To operate in the sector. This will allow you to assess opportunities and will make you seem very trustworthy. You need to choose a business model. From my slides, there are already over 20 different types of mo models that you can start with and, and, and make money through. Then you need to identify a target audience. Who am I going to sell to? You have to identify that. At Reti, we offer training in all of the value chains. And eventually, you guys can go to our website and see some of our physical trainings that we offer. Next is, uh, excuse me. The next thing is, now, these, you can enter the market through the following ways. One, you might decide to sell solar products, right? Sorry, I mean wholesale. Wholesale of solar products. Hello, can everyone hear me? I'm over with you. I'm over with you. Keep flowing. Okay. Then retail distributorship is the next one. You can identify people who import, who import solar products, and you can be a distributor. Identify problems in your community and serve them with the solar products. You can decide to open up a shop and sell solar products. You'll be surprised at the rate of inquiry that people are making. Just try to search for it. You see that a lot of people, just question people in your church, Look around you, you see a lot of people are ready to switch to solar. Once you can convince them that you have a payment plan, you can design solar PV systems for clients. Now, there are a lot of solar businesses who do not do design. What they do is installation. They rely on young people like you to do the designs for them. They go ahead and secure contracts from government and they look for young chaps to do the design and, and they make money that way. About two of our alumni are doing this for people, right? So this area can go into the market. You can install solar panels. You can just install. That can be all you would do. People get their jobs and they call you to install solar for them. All the services you can offer is that you can audit for people. You can conduct energy audits for homes and for businesses. People do not know the amount of energy that they use. People do not understand the electricity bills per day. So if you offer this service, people will be able to understand how much, how they get to this value at the end of, of the, by the time the electricity bills comes in. So it's called energy audits. You can do it for homes and for businesses and help them optimize their energy use. So that is a very strong value, especially in these days. It's also called energy efficiency. Now you have to, you can maintain install solar systems. One of our alumni then there will be solar installations everywhere. A lot of them will be needing cleaning and maintenance. So this is one other way to you know, delve into the sector. You can consult for people. People consult because they have the knowledge. By the time you learn all the things you learn, through the mistakes that you're going to make, you have adequate knowledge to advise people, to advise government, to advise companies on what they can do, on the type of solar energy, or type of renewable energy that is suitable for them. Sources or, okay. 
excuse me, sources of funding for your solar business. Personal savings, so you can decide to save for one year from now. I know some people say, oh, personal savings, but I don't have money. That's why I'm looking to start a business. We started we'd never fully set up we didn't fully set up when we started it was a journey a very serious journey you can get loans from your family and friends there are a lot of small business loans right now on the outside that you can that you can also get for your solar businesses you can go into partnerships with people two of you come together decide to float a company and run it sometimes two is better than one they say you can build up a company that can attract investors Right, by putting things in place, target audience, take uh, market, take products, take put your structure, your, your your company properly, and you can attract investors. And right now, there are a lot of funding available for solar energy projects. But these funders are looking for people whose companies are put together. Many. this is my money do a project for a village and he was able to spell out the problem properly that he was working on and people liked the idea a lot and they donated to it and people liked the idea a lot and they donated to it so you can participate in community schemes also community estates people coming together to fund for solar initiatives and estates called one of our students and say oh we want to put this money together because we want to power our estate so things like that i'm rounding now and my references are small starter wikipedia solar solar facts green match and mage solar so we're getting set right now for questions uh i think i'm done with my presentation so i will take questions now um. Hello, is everyone still there? You can write your questions in the chat box and I will answer them. What questions do you have around starting your business, the opportunities and what you should do? Okay, guys, um, those who have questions, kindly um, type your questions, put on the session, and so that we can respond to it. Put it on the, uh, on the question tab so we can respond to it, please. Please do that. Share Gun Ade Kunle. Type it, please. Type it. Type your questions. Okay, Q and A session. Yes, Q and A. We are waiting, Shebun. You can type your question. We are waiting. I think we just have a few minutes for questions. Somebody says, is it possible to get the slides? Is that, is that part of the deal for that? There will be a replay of this webinar, but we don't have access to the slides, please. Yeah, I think the replay will do the work because the replay has the slides as well. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for questions. So we assume you all know what we just discussed. Okay, Agbola Tunde said, which company is the best, which company is the best way to import solar panels and the accessories? Which company? Uh, question sounds confusing. Company, wow. Is it company? I know in, Ni in Nigeria, some of the companies I mentioned, they 
they already import. So I, I think that what people do is that they buy from those people that already import. That whole story around importing and how to do is supplies is actually another a full course that we offer. And what you need to do about importing, where to go, what you need to know about licensing and all of that is a full different course. But the companies that I've mentioned in my slides can give you a very good head start. You know, go ahead and go and see what those people do. You say yes. sorry, I meant importing from China. I don't understand your question. The question is Okay, yeah, I think I've answered that, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we have a full course that, we, that covers that. In fact, we have members of our alumni who import. And so we're going to share access to these people. You can talk with them, including licensing and what you need to know about importing so that which one to import because there are a lot of fakes out there. That will be a part of another webinar that we'll do. Okay. Okay, in starting the business, there are certain standards you must follow, license you must follow before getting started. Yes, she already talked about that. Yeah, is that all the person said? That's all the person just said. And Dari Bassi said, um, okay, I think questions are coming in now. My question is, why do most solar streets lightning fail in Nigeria? And yet, they say solar is sustainable. I rely, but I cry whenever I see solar street light will not work. Is that does that do with solar or the government? Was that what the person said? Does that do with solar or the government? No, no, no. I'm I'm actually replying. You are saying that. Okay. You see, I like that question very much because that was the question that I asked myself too. After I came across a lot of failed installations in my community. As a matter of fact, my parents had moved to a place where they didn't have, they, you know when your parents built a new house and they moved to another part of town, where at the time they didn't have access, they were not connected to the grid there. And I saw a solar health center in that community with a lot of panels on the roof. So, wow, I walked in there, but the place was not working. And women, they said, it stopped working after six months. When I go to panels and I hear people saying solar does not work, my brother, whoever asked the question, it is because of lack of installers who know how to do the job. That's one. There are, they, they, we have a problem of people who do not really know how to do the job. There's a lot of people who sell solar panels, but they do not know the system's design aspect of it. They don't know the system's design. They don't know what amount of solar does this street light need? And how will I do the system? What type of solar panel will I buy for this road? Should I buy the one, should we, should we have the one that comes with the battery or should it just be the one that works only at day, direct connection, that works only at daytime? Of course, you can't even use street lights at daytime. So that is all the question. And then you have people, the beneficiaries of the project, not really knowing how to care for the products. For instance, in the case of a home, solar that you installed in a home, and you have people plugging washing machine to it. Meanwhile, that system was not supposed to carry washing machine. It was not designed to be able to accommodate a washing machine. So that's the second reason that people not having uh, sub uh, sufficient education on how to deal with the system. And the third one can be what I call selfish interest. Like Chris said about government or whatever, selfish interest. There are some people who install this solar products and they give out these contracts and they tell the they tell the the business that is getting the contract we want you to install the fake ones because we want you to give us part of the money back i know some of you have heard about that so let's not pretend that see what i'm saying is so yes that is also that so that when they install the product they are the inefficient types those street lights that you see that is why they fail on time I don't know if I answered the question. So these are the three reasons why it happens. But when you get a good, when you get a good training and education on how these things work, when you get information around buying proper solar products and supply, and if you're lucky and you get a contract where people where they care about the people, then you should never have any solar product whatsoever fail. You see, this was the reason we started the Renewable Energy Training Institute. So I wanted to share this information out there around inefficient installers who don't know the job. So I hope that I've answered your questions. All right, that's a good one. Okay, somebody's ex uh, can 
you explain more about how pollution is a con of renewable energy. How pollution is a con, C O N. Okay, C O N, thank you. This is because some people have argued that the method of production still utilizes fossil fuel. So the method of producing the solar cells, you know the solar cells, the ones that make up the panel, the individual cells, process of manufacturing that, process of manufacturing the plastics around the panel, process of manufacturing batteries, the process of transporting these things all over the world via plane, promotes pollution because they still use fossil fuel to do those things so that's how okay in starting in starting the business there's certain standard you must follow license you must get before starting of course i think you've talked about that yes let me just add that yes first of all register your business with the government register it appropriately according to what business you want to do then there are some people who do the advanced type of installation. They work with governments and they can sell their electricity. So they can build a mini grid for a community and they can sell the electricity for the community. Now, those people need a certain type of license from the government to be able to do that. So that's quite an advanced type of uh, scheme, which is usually offered by other bigger type of government to government and or other bigger type of companies, not for startups like you and I. So for startups, as we are starting, we are simply trying to install solar for individual homes. But it's important you study these licenses so that in the future you want to start building mini grids. A mini grid is a, how do I explain it? It's like a small type of grid, a solar mini grid, whereby you have calculated the load of the community and you build a grid which has solar panels, batteries, inverters, charge controller to supply exactly that amount of electricity. So that's another license you need. First, register your business, then find out what type of license you need if you're going to do this type of bigger projects. Thank you. Okay, I have an, uh, do you have any branch in major cities where one can learn about this or is it purely online? Okay, um, I think she has answered that one where she said, they have their base in Lagos, but in April, um, March, this thing, we're launching an online course on solar energy business which I'll give details right away when we're done with the question and answer session. So um, you can learn in Lagos, but you can also take the business course online and it's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. Um, Shagun Adekone said, I have an idea on solar insulation, but the issue is I feel I have no concrete training on this enough. How do we work around customer acquisition plan? Most people run away through initial, because initial acquisition is high. Uh, uh, acquisition of customers. Okay. Then um, work around on reaching the poor because most of the market are needed by the poor community, especially payment plans. Please, can we ask questions talking? Uh, I don't know if we can. I prefer the, the typing on because if we do that, to unmute every other person will be very, very... Okay, but let me see. Let me... Uh, so you can try. Okay, Shagun. Shagun still here. Then another person saying, okay, I will attend to Shagun's zone last. Um, uh, less maintenance is key, it's just like buying a car but not serving it at all. Okay, please kindly spread the training module cost and medium application. Um, okay, there's one we're going to announce right away. For more information about mini grids, you can google the mini grid regulation by any hours. Okay, I think these ones are not African Mini Grid Development Association, AMDA, A M D A. Okay, you can check that out uh, as well. Is Shagun still here? Shagun. You can unmute him. Yeah. Okay, let me unmute you. Okay, Shagun, you can talk now. Hello, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Yeah, thank you very much for this. Um, let me go straight to the question. I I happen to have had a little training on solar installation and also working with people. Because I have, a, I have um, interest in this energy sector. But one of the issues I'm having is that I feel I don't have enough training on this. Because sometimes when we get to a building, I notice that there are some electrical work. They have to separate some loads from the main source, uh, remove some AC, remove some uh, fridge, and the rest of them. So I feel I don't have a concrete um, 
knowledge on installation and other things. And I don't know if maybe you have offices close here in South South, maybe in Benin, or where someone can learn. That's the first question. And the second question is that um, is there you were mentioning some uh, work around plan about the payments and the rest. I've seen some products uh, in some villages. Actually, I saved in the north, and I noticed that some guys have gone there. That so, some solar guys have gone there, and what they are offering them is actually nothing. There is even no battery, but the 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 prices the they are collecting per month is something is very ridiculous, as in not even up to one point five kva. So I don't know if there is a work around plan for collecting payments because I don't want a situation whereby you install solar panel and uh, inverters and before you know, they run away with it or maybe there's a way to do that and, and um, to just to reduce the initial acquisition cost because once you tell them this is the price to get it, even when you are now explaining that uh, over 10 years, or over five years, you are going to make your money back in return. They won't even listen. Just that initial mention of a uh, 500,000, 200,000, they are already scared. Okay. And they tell you, ah, no, no, no. I thought it's 50. Then the third <laughs> one is that, wow. oh, sorry. The third question, the last one, is that um, if you notice the demand of this, uh, of this technology, of this solar technology, are uh, more in the villages, not even the cities. And the people, living in this, when I mean villages, the remote villages, they need it more. Um, and the people there, they are just farmers and they are really poor. So how do we work around a payment plan for them also? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chris. Okay. Thank you. Thank everybody. you, Chief. Yeah, please, any other person who asks question, try to limit it to one, okay? So that our webinar will not be so long. Okay, the first thing, you said you need more training. We had a guy who came to our school exactly with this. He, had, he was already running businesses, his solar base, but he found that sometimes he doesn't get the calculation right or he doesn't know what to do. So, yes, indeed, you need an adequate training. We have a training that we do in our physical office in Lagos every month. We have one every month, right? So you can come for our training and you can be put through. For instance, some customers already have installed inverters in their house. How do you do that separation? How can you, do you still need to buy a new inverter? No, they already have an inverter. How do you make all the connections? So that is very, a very important question for people who already have some type of wiring in their houses. So an adequate training which we offer in our course, Solar PV Design and Installation, every month will put you through because you then have an access to talk to our engineer and chief technical uh, facilitator for that. Secondly, payment plan. I, I like what you said about uh, people in the villages needing these things more. Uh, what I tell my entrepreneurs, what I tell the people we train is this, please reduce your cost very well until you enter, until you make your entry into the market. Because most entrepreneurs want to give high cost because they want that solar money. Let us start making it now. They want to quickly, you know, because they've heard that there is money in solar. So they want to, they, they, they share prices that are too big. As much as possible, please just add a little profit until you make that entry, right? So that way you can reduce the cost. Also advise your clients to not use items that consume more energy in their homes. For instance, a person who has a fridge and an AC wants to put it on solar. You must advise the person not to. You must tell them to start with only their lights and fans until they have more money to add the fridge and the AC, right? So it boils down to how you manage your client, how you manage your market and the people that you're working with. So you have, you talked about security as well. You can work with community leaders in the villages, in the places where you talked about, which I agree with. That's where they need it more. Work with community leaders there about the, about the installations you want to do so that you can work with them to preserve some of them, to avoid thefts, right? And then you talked about demand. What, what was that last point? Demand is higher in the villages. They cannot afford your products. That is true too. One of our students told me he was working on a battery model. He's an engineer so that batteries will be less expensive. So there are many people who are constantly inventing, looking for ways that these things can be cheaper. 
So you just give it a couple of months, you will see more products, excuse me, that are more affordable so that it's going to become more cheaper for the people in the community. Also, the people in the villages do not have to install solar panels. The people, you don't have to install panels for them. There are other types of products you can sell to them whilst you're looking for funding for them to be able to build solar, you know, to be able to install solar for them. Solar lamps and other types of solar products, solar charger, uh, there are other solar for lighting. Those other smaller products that are affordable, you can start with. I hope I've answered your question. Thank you. Hello. 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 Okay, so there's a demo light here. Uh, Adema is saying, please give your mission to where to buy solar panels. And I think that's something she's going to announce very soon on our course that we are launching. Um, how can one penetrate the market with a fair cost? I think you've answered this one. That is already existing in the market from what you know to get a quality solar, quality system for solar installation. Sorry, how can one enter the market with a what? With a fair cost that is already existing in the market from what you know to get a quality system for installation. Okay. Wow, I wish I can read that. I didn't get that fully. I wish I can read it myself. So how can you get the the mark? I think this is a kind of technical question. That has um it's not just something that needs to be answered straight. Like how can one penetrate the market? It's like a business plan with a fair cost. Okay, how can we penetrate the market with a low cost? That low is cost already existing in the market from what you know to get a quality system for installation. Ah, okay. No, you're right. I mean, it's a little bit, um, it's much, it's a big question. I cannot answer all of them at once, but getting into the market with low cost, though, you must be careful about low cost things so that you do not buy fake products. They're all over the place in the world, in Africa, even in Lagos, Nigeria, there are a lot of fake products. So if you're constantly looking for things that are very, very cheap, you might run into trouble. So eventually I'll look at your per, I'll look at your question in detail and answer it properly. Okay. Okay. So um I think um that's that's that for question and answer. Um let's move on to the last session and then um, we call it a night. I'm sure many of you would love to um participate in having in in, in, in starting a solar business. So We've actually designed something very, very uh, interesting for you all. And I'm sure um, this will excite everyone who wants to, who wants to start um, something with solar energy business, okay? So it's called the Solar Energy Business Course. Can you all see my screen? Can you all see my screen? Please let me know. Can you all see my screen? Let me know in the, sh in the, chat, box, in the chat box. Can you yeah. all see my screen? Okay. Yes, uh, okay. Uh, so, solar energy business course. So, on Dabba Dot School, we are launching a solar energy business course. So many of what you have learned today from Glory needs you to expand. Needs you to know how to go about it. And we have to design this course, especially knowing that. A lot of people are not in Lagos, one. Uh, of course, there are also people who do work, who work, and they want to also tap into the solar energy business. Now, uh, mm -hmm. as somebody who, who, who does a lot of things with online business, I know a lot of you want to come in as an investor, you want to come in as an entrepreneur, you want to get a hold of the knowledge in the solar energy industry. And so we've created a solar energy business course where you learn how to start and run a profitable solar business. Now, this isn't too technical. This is for those who are saying, okay, I want to know how this business starts. It's like getting a handbook, a manual that can help you know which area you need to go into when you want to come into solar energy. So this is what you've been learning in the course. Of course, we're in pre-launch phase and then we hope that by March, end of March and beginning of April, this course will be live on Daba.co. So it's currently on the pre-launch pre sale. And this is it. What do you need to start? What should you be learning 
in this course. What do you need to start a solar business, the tools and the equipment to start your business? Remember, go research something that there are people who are just researchers in the, in the ecosystem. There are people who are just researchers. There are people who are just consultants in the ecosystem. So you want to become a consultant. You want to do what Glory is doing. You want to get the kind of um, information uh, and, and, and where she's operating. And this course is for you. Getting the adequate training, understanding the solar energy industry, how the money-making value chains in the industry and how to choose, uh, how much money you need to start up, the operational cost, identifying your target market, getting your customers, prof profiling and prospecting customers for your solar energy business. And which kind of company should I register? Which kind of company should I register for your solar energy? And legal considerations, uh, importing your solar products, um, structure, strategies, licenses. Then another one, other opportunities, value chain, NGO advocacy. If you, can, if you notice, I met Glory last year, December, while I was on a trip down to Dubai. She was actually on her way to Paris and Paris to Spain. And guess what? She's busy with advocacy. And she told me throughout those journey in 2018, she didn't pay a dime for any of those trips. So there are a lot of value chain in the solar energy industry that you can participate in and, you know, of course, make good money and create good influence. And marketing and branding your solar energy business, how you can end with a solar-based business based on jobs and projects. Uh, why is solar energy a good investment? Then solar farm as an investment and seven ways to invest and start a solar farm business. That's what this course on solar energy business course will take. Okay, and this is it, guys. This is it, guys. Uh, we're also offering a unique bonus that you've never seen. There's no website for this, of course, and I'm going to be making an offer at the end of this webinar, which I'm going to do right away. I'm going to make an offer for those who want to jump on this and say, okay, Chris, I want to start this solar energy business and I'm ready to get all the trainings I need to start. And even if you're not an engineering student, even if you're not a technical person, this training is for you. You don't need to be technical to be part of this training. Okay? The big bonus that you're going to participate with everybody many people can I, I even see people on the streets just all like these days but you know what you learn from matters a lot because of the opportunities that is behind it and the bonus we are offering with this course is this solar energy and climate energy change free travel opportunities across the world in this bonus you will get access to information keyword keyword access to information access to information on how to apply for scholarships, funding, conference participation across various countries. Okay, there's one Glory is doing now. She's she she's taking a course in South Africa, start this February, and she'll be in South Africa for two weeks, then come back to Nigeria and take the remaining courses online. And that stuff is sponsored. Okay, you're also gonna get highly valued information on where and how to apply for scholarship, fellowships job opportunities okay job opportunities in the solar industry okay then automatic induction she runs a renewable energy technology company institute in lake here and when you take this course you'll be inducted into the red sea engineers and entrepreneurs alumni association where you gain job and internship opportunity if you check the first slide, Glory told you how someone in our group, in our alumni, was able to get a job immediately. And so far, alumni, they've created more than 50 jobs, okay, in this same industry. So what you're getting via this course is what we call access, information, knowledge, you know, and more opportunities. And you're going to have a template for solar energy business plan. Of course, some of you are asking on that. If you want to start it, let's say you want to submit a proposal to a company, to a firm, to an institute on solar energy business, a detailed plan review by top solar experts, and you're also solar business marketing plan. This course is going for 25000 but we're doing a 40% discount tonight. 
But in the 40% discount, I was saying, if you're going to start paying for this solar energy business cost, if you pay tonight, if you pay in this pre-launch phase, you're paying only 15,000, okay? And this 15,000 gives you access to a full cost module on everything I have mentioned here. Everything I've mentioned here, you get access to it. And guys, if I were you, one of the reasons why I'm going to take this course isn't just for this knowledge alone, okay? Knowledge is powerful, it's good. But you see, getting access to information like this that will change your life, change your career, change your game in 2020. How many of you notice Elon Musk, the guy behind Tesla? How many of you notice how... Tesla stocks has been growing crazy. You know, last year, Tesla stock was around $100, $200. Today, Tesla stock is trading over $650. That's to show you the way things are going in the renewable energy uh, business, okay? That's the way things are going. So that's why you're going to get access to seven ways to invest and start a solar farm business. Solar farm is a huge business. I mean... Things happening in the renewable energy system is a huge one, okay? Now, if you want to participate in this course, I'm going to drop my number here. I'm going to also drop Dory's number, okay? So you can reach any one of us. My, and, and please, the preferred mode of communication is WhatsApp. I really don't entertain calls most times, okay? I really don't entertain calls most times, okay? So you want to, you want to take on this course starting tonight, you want to take on this course starting tonight. You want to be part of those in the pre-launch fee. Our pre-launch fee for this course is 15,000 Naira. Of course, this is after Glory said, because normally people who know me on that, I know my courses don't sell for less than $100, except for the list one we released, okay? And this is the price Glory has decided, okay, uh, Chris, just reduce this for those who want to take this course on Daba. Okay, so you want to take this course for 15,000 is our pre-launch. After the after pre-launch time, this course is going back to 100 US dollars. Okay, this course is going to 100 US dollars. Send me a message on WhatsApp and I'm also going to drop Glory's number here. Let me drop it right away. Glory's number is here. I'm 0701883. Three, four, eight, four. Yeah. So for those who are messaging from outside Nigeria, you can actually add plus three, four, and remove this, and and you are neat. Okay. Do you have any question concerning the course, or um, there's something you don't understand? Please, I like to take questions. 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 Okay, so for those of you interested in taking this course, take a look at these bonuses you will be missing if you don't take this course. <laughs> take a look at the huge bonuses you will be missing if you don't take this course. One of the reasons I told Glory to come on Daba to take this is that I know there are a countless number of youths who are looking for opportunities like this. Even if you're not doing it for just the technical reasons, do it also, do it also, so that, so that, what day is this course taking place? The course is launching, it's a course. The course is launching ending of March, okay? So we are in pre-launch now, pre-launch. The course is launching ending of March because Dori has to take a lot of courses on uh, South Africa. Um, the, a lot of, in short, to drag Glory to be part of this kind of stuff, it, 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 has to, it, it took a lot of meetings and planning for her to be part of this. So March 2020, is when the course is launching officially on daba.school okay so you you have access it's a video course it's an online video course it's an online video course please take note it's an online video course it's an online video course okay and i don't know glory do you have um, some of your offline training taking off recently maybe we can also let them know about that Okay, this is an online video course, Solar Energy Business Course. Solar Energy Business Course, it's an online video course, and it's launching March 2020. Okay, so with the number of videos you are going to get access to, 
Okay, you're going to get access to a number of videos. You're going to get access to the resources and also these bonuses. Remember, pre-launch price for this course is around fifteen thousand. So it's like we're giving more than we're giving more than fifty percent discount as the pre-launch price. And once the pre-launch date is off, we go back to a hundred dollars for this course. Take advantage of this opportunity and become a solar business person. Become a solar energy uh, entrepreneur. Yes, it's an online course launching ending of March. Okay, so by end of March, get access to it. But now we are in the pre-launch phase. Okay, so as many of you that want to take this course or are interested in building a business around solar energy, this course is for you. Okay. Okay, so do we still have others who are asking questions before we call it a night? Before we call it a night? Okay. All right. I have, to, I have to know the specific and that because I have a training I'm attending right now, so I will know you the date and time. Remember, the course is online, so it's not it's not a course you are it's not a course you're taking live. It's a course that is online, pre-recorded videos for you. It is not a course that will start. It is not a live webinar. It's a course that is recorded. That's going to be recorded for you. That is going to be recorded, and you have access to it the same way you have access to any course you have, like on Udemy and other. So it is launched, you can access it anytime. Yes. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. Mm. Wow. Oh, okay. I, I said that our offline course is coming up on 2nd to 6th March, 2020. I already answered it. So you can just visit reti.com.ng. .com.ng. I just posted it on the chat to see our calendar for the year and see and, and you know, choose the one that you can participate in. Then we have the physical legal trainings. Okay. Promo like, is, like the promo is ending. It's a thirty day promo. It's a thirty day promo. So by from anything from March, this course goes back to a hundred dollars. Anything from March it goes back to a hundred dollars. That's when the promo is ending. There's one is saying, how can I get the recordings of this lecture today? Um, follow the Telegram channel. We are going to update the news on the on the link to do that. Sorry, um, I think most people here were from the... How do some of you hear about this webinar, please? I'd like to see what works. Okay. How did you hear about the webinar? No, we had about, we had about, we had close to 50 participants and many of them are offline now. Yeah. Gone off. Yeah, I think many people heard it from social media and from the Telegram groups. I guess, okay, from Telegram. So I'll say via Twitter, so via Chris and from Telegram. Okay, others, please, we want to check something, please. Okay. Interesting. Telegram, is it Chris Annie? Okay, LinkedIn, okay. Twitter, Facebook, and Chris Annie everywhere, okay. Nice. Instagram, okay. You'd like to know how to continue to advertise. That's why I'm asking this. Okay. Okay. Telegram, okay. Telegram, okay. And Facebook, Chrisani. Twitter, okay. Please, I need more, I need more, I need more, I need more. You have 25 people here, so what's happening? Sweet and Chris, Annie. okay. Funny enough, we had over 118 people who registered via for the Zoom class. 
and we don't know why many of them are not online. Okay, but of course they will see the replay of this course and uh, from the others what. So we're going to drop it in because we had some people who had terrible networks tonight. We have 18, what are 18 registrants for this class on Zoom. 118 people registered for this class tonight. I mean, this is the they did today in the past 24 hours. Okay, since I dropped the link on Telegram, we have 118 people. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, I even had some, I don't know if this guy that sent me a question via the email is here. His name is Antonio Tornero. Um, uh, someone Kuwait said, I'm on transit from Ilong to Shugo. I still try to be here. Wow. Kuwait, that's, that's a great one. That's a great one. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, this is interesting. Interesting. That's a good one. I don't know if Tonero is here. Uh, there's a lot of why I shared the link to complain of network issues. Okay, sorry about that. Um, one guy sent a question, Antonio Tonero, I don't know if he's here. Thank you for the opportunity. Will I be able to do this, that, 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 that? How do we start sort for new start business? Funny enough, most of the information is asking for, we're asked in this, we're answered in this um, webinar. Okay. Um, okay, so I think we can call it a night. For those who missed it, we're going to post the, pre, the, the recorded session. We're going to post it on YouTube, and people can have access to it via the Telegram channel, okay? Um, okay. Um, all right, Glory, any other thing? Oh, no, no, I don't have any other thing. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so we'll call it a night. Remember the course offer once again. Remember the course offer, the bonuses, the course content, and what you're getting, and the date of our launch, March 2020. And um, I hope to see you there. For those of you who will be taking the course, I hope to see you there. And when will the promo end? You can ask, share that with them. It's 30 days, it's, it's a 30 day promo. Anything from, today is, today is 31st, anything from uh, March 1, the promo ends. Okay. Yes. So of course, we'll keep, we'll keep, there'll be other, there'll be, there'll be, there'll be, there'll be more classes going on, orientation, blogs and all that, to let people know about the course. So, uh, we we'll also put up an advert for this replay so that many others can see it so that they won't say they did not hear about the 30 days promo. That's why we're making it 30 days. Normally, we should make it like just two weeks and we're done. All right. All right. Okay, guys. Do have a wonderful night and enjoy yourself.